What's up guys, welcome back. If you're looking for a budget friendly and option packed vehicle, definitely don't skip this. What I have for you today is a 2023 Kia Rio five door. This is the S model with the technology package and thanks to Gettle Kia of Bradenton, Florida, I'm gonna take you on a complete tour of this vehicle. We're gonna check it out outside, inside, test drive the whole nine yards. And if this is the first time we meet, my name is Matt here on Matt the Car Guy. I post two car reviews every single week. That's something that's up your alley. Go ahead, give me a subscribe. And after you watch this video, don't forget to like it. If you're looking not to break your budget, it's really hard to find a vehicle that is under $20,000 and it has some features, let alone as many features as we have on this 2023 Kia Rio five-door hatchback S model. Now there's two different body styles for the Rio for 2023. One of it is a sedan and it's offered in LX and S trims and this five-door hatchback is only offered as an S trim. Now this particular one also has an $1,800 package that's been added on it and that's called the technology package but it does have much more than just the technology. So let's take a look at the look of this vehicle and the styling. So it's rather nice, nothing extraordinary but you know it's pretty good looking in my opinion. It does have this two indents on the sides, pretty large headlights that are all LED. That is part of that technology package. Right here you do have this new new Kia logo, a little bit of a trim piece. Now that's open, that's open down below here for better engine cooling. That's open for better aerodynamics right over here. So it's all functional. And if you're wondering what powers up this thing, let's take a look. So under the hood, what we have here is a 1.6 liter four cylinder engine about 120 horsepower, 112 foot-pounds of torque. Not the most powerful vehicle, but it does give you a pretty good gas mileage. It does give you 36 combined, 32 in the city, 41 on the expressway. It is paired up with this intelligent variable transmission, which is a Kia's take on CVT. You do have a prop stick, a little bit of a sound insulation in it. Well, given to two body style options, my personal choice would be the hatchback. I think it's a better looking one and also it's more functional as far as loading cargo, but we'll get to that. Let's take a look at a couple features on this vehicle. First of all, the wheels. With the technology package, the $1,800 package I mentioned before, you also get the alloy wheels. They're 15 in size, 185 by 65 is the size of the tires. You also get the rear disc brakes with the technology package, so some safety features on here as well. As far as the look of it, it's nice, typical hatchback, nothing too crazy about it. You do have the top of the mirror in the same color as the rest of the car, no blind spot assist, no turn signal indicator on it, but you do have these chrome door handles with the smart entry system. All you have to do, press the button, as long as you have the key on it, it's gonna lock or unlock the vehicle for you. And of course, it is a typical hatch, so we're gonna check out the cargo area now. And here's the back of it. So as in front, we had some LED lights. You have the incandescent lights in the back. Uh, pretty straightforward, nothing too crazy about it. You do have a third brake light, kind of a shark fin with a little antenna sticking up on at the top. And then you do have the windshield wiper. Uh, standard comes with the rear view camera. I believe that is the requirement for all the cars sold in the US right now. New Kia log in the bottom of it is this matte black. No visible exhaust you do have the uh, reflector lights on both sides. Of course, it is manual, but it opens up really nice and light. Let's check it out. And going up close in here, you can see how deep it is. So it is pretty deep well right inside of here, which is uh, kind of strange that you would have to like carry stuff 
over it and then drop it but unless it's something really heavy that shouldn't be an issue you do have a spare tire underneath here temporary use tire you can remove this cargo uh, cover and then we can fold down the seats they're 60 40 split so in case you're wondering if you can move a one bedroom apartment well don't get too carried away but you do have some room in here with the seats folded down of course remove the cargo cover as well so check this out guys uh roominess is not a strong point of this vehicle now for its class which is a subcompact hatchback basically it's not bad but if you're six feet tall like myself and you like to drive fairly comfortably this is where you would adjust the seats now if you had somebody same size as you sitting in the back I'm definitely touching my knees to the back of the seat. I do have plenty of headroom. Shoulder room is not a problem, it's just the knee room. So as long as you have kids, somebody that's smaller, or maybe you are shorter and you like to drive a little bit further up, that shouldn't be an issue for you. Well, let me show you the rest of this interior. Keep in mind, what we're looking at is a subcompact budget sedan. So of course, you're gonna have some hard plastic in here. It's not horrible looking you do have this aluminum painted door handle the window control a little bit storage at the bottom of the door and the speaker in the back now if we jump inside of here what we do have is we do have this cloth covered seats they are on the firmer side they're not very plush and comfy but as you can see they do fall down 60 40 split i want to show you how that's done in just a little bit and uh, right here in the middle console there's no vents i didn't expect any uh, on the small uh, hatchback like this and you do have usb type a now very very slight bump in the middle and then you do have the seat back pocket but only on the passenger side let's jump inside but before we do that let's hear how these doors sound when they close in all right so they're not the best out so probably give it about four out of ten uh, the door panels they're fairly thin again we're looking at this budget friendly vehicle so you do have a lot of uh, hard plastic materials but you do have the power windows door locks mirror adjustments here you do have a little bit of storage of course the seats are manual adjustments on both the driver and passenger side you do have quite nice trimming on the seats i do like the look of this material like i mentioned before it is on the tougher side but it's not uncomfortable now you do have the tilt steering wheel does a telescope nope just a tilted steering wheel and then we're going to take a look at the rest of this interior so here it is this uh, kia rio s on the interior it actually doesn't look that bad i mean it, yes it doesn't use any of the uh, plushy materials as you can see of the higher end models but overall you know it is a budget friendly vehicle so they do have to cut costs somewhere now uh, definitely technology is there and i'm going to mention a few things that we have here that sometimes you can't even find them on the highest end models steering wheel it is on the larger side it's uh, fairly soft i mean you have buttons on both sides brand new kia logo now you have a mode that's for your radio adjust the volume mute button and then you can hang up and pick up your phone you also have the voice control settings on the other side you have a little menu button that basically controls what's going on in the middle of the instrument cluster cruise control you know and then your lane keep assist and uh, these are the buttons used to scroll up and down the functions and let's see what's inside of it so the instrument cluster is a combination of the two analog gauges for the speedometer on the right hand side that also has the fuel gauge at the bottom and the tachometer on the left hand side that has the temperature in the bottom in the middle you'll find this 4.2 inch display which i believe this is a part of this technology package as well and you know we can go through the menu see what's here so you have the fuel economy attention level and then you have some user settings you can driver assistance settings by the way you know it comes uh, with the technology package technology package includes the forward collision avoidance assistance lane keeping assist lane following assist high beam assist driver's attention warning lane departure warning and those are all the safety features that you get with the technology package so i think it's money well spent and as you can see you know all of those features can be adjusted or turned off here you got the back lights can be adjusted here one touch turn signal you know something that i uh, really like you know you hit it and then it goes for three 
clicks or three blinks or four blinks and turns itself off that you know you can avoid having that turn signal on for miles doors you know auto unlock uh, two press unlock you know however you want to do it let's go back and see what else convenience features you know rear occupant alert this is on which is pretty cool that's important so we don't leave anybody in the car it's going to just give you the alert on the dashboard you know and and there's some other features that you can adjust in here it also displays the temperature at the bottom and this is pretty much it but that's a lot more sometimes than you get in definitely in the basic sedan so let's move on to this infotainment system well this is an eight inch screen and what's nice about it uh, that you do have the wireless android auto and wireless apple carplay so let's say i have my phone connected uh, wirelessly to this thing right here and there's no wires and definitely here's your android auto screen nice colorful and go back to the kia options and here's what we have so you hit all menus and then you have the phone voice memo radio fm am and sxm which is the sirius xm feature on here and then let's go back to the home screen another feature in the menu you have media again you can connect your phone to it quiet mode and voice memo those are the features they're standard pretty much all of the kia and hyundai's vehicle kia and connect is their own system you need a subscription for it um, setup users manual notification let's see what's in the setup so you can set up your sound device connection display buttons again just like pretty much all of the kia and hyundai's that have some buttons that you can basically customize it there's a custom button and mode button mode button is on the steering wheel and right now it turns on the fm but you can decide of what do you want it to do so bluetooth audio phone projection usb music you know whatever you want it to turn on that's what it's going to do right now if you press it more than one time it's going to go fm am sirius xm or you can turn them all on the custom button is uh, where's the custom button oh right here there's a custom button right here that's basically where it can control so kia connect quiet mode display on and off and then at the bottom here you have the volume and power knob radio media seek track those are your shortcut buttons and down here again part of this technology package also give you the automatic climate control this is single zone but you know this is a nice feature to have especially if you're not spending a ton of money hazard lights and down below you have the front window defogger rear window defroster and then basically the fan settings now over here you have the usb type a ports and i'm surprised because most of the kia use the usb type c and you do have a sport drive mode which is kind of ironic with the vehicle that has 120 horsepower regular gear shifter nothing too crazy but you do have this manual mode if you would like to shift it manually so you can adjust your gears up and down of course let's move it to park but before we go any further with this let's check out this rear view camera standard rear view camera nothing too crazy about it does it have yep it does have the active trajectory lines in here quality of it is okay it's nothing too crazy i think they have two grades of cameras and kias and this one gets the lower grade but again this is not bad and down below you have the cup holders you also have your regular parking brake not electronic one and then you have a tiny little bit of storage right and the console scrolling up on top you have the rear view mirror lights those are incandescent bulbs in here you do have a sunglasses holder no sunroof and you do have the mirrors on both sides illumination is separate well this is an interior of this budget friendly hatchback let's take it for a spin and as we driving we're going to talk a little bit about the pricing because that's important right especially if we're reviewing it as this budget friendly vehicle so first of all there's only one option available as far as the trim levels on the kia rio five door hatchback and this is what we're sitting in right now this is the s 
trim. Uh, now this has the technology package added on. Now the S trim starts at, I have the sticker right here, $17,490. So relatively inexpensive. The $1,800 adds a lot of features. This would be my preferred choice, but if you don't like it, you can stick with the $17,490 you had at $1,100 for destination. If about $18,600, you have a nice little hatchback, right? Brand new. Now keep in mind, it's also covered with the same Kia 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty has all of the other Kia, so no difference on that. It's got a good gas mileage, 36 is combined, 32 in the city, 41 on the expressway. Now the 1800 box, here's what it adds. It adds the forward collision avoidance assist, lane keeping assist, lane following assist, high beam assist, driver attention warning, lane departure warning, LA wheels, rear disc brakes, LED headlights and positioning lights, Supervision media cluster with a 4.2 inch display. You do have a Kia Connect, which you probably don't get on the base one. Automatic temperature control, rear occupant alert, smart key with push button start, and the Highline TPM. As far as the key, you do have a smart key. It is a push button start, so it is more safety oriented. As you might know, some of the uh, previous Kias with the, the turn key then. Uh, fare very well as far as that, but this one already has it. So let's uh, spin it around. Go to the left, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four parking space. Well, I don't know if I'm looking at the different parking space. It doesn't seem like anything is different, like four, four and a half. That's pretty much the standard right now. So the turning radius has improved on a lot of those vehicles. Since this lot is fairly open and very few cars in here, let's see just a little bit of a twist and turns. Actually holds up pretty nice. Fairly stiff, so it doesn't go all over the place, which is important. And while the 0 to 60, trust me, it's not important on this vehicle, I want to see how quickly it gets off the line. And then once we get on the road, see how nice it can merge in traffic. So let's go. All right, well, this is uh, where it could probably use a little bit of improvement. Then again, it's 120 horsepower. I'm not expecting a whole lot. Well, let's see if it's safe because that's what's important, right? I mean, if you're thinking to yourself like, well, you know, I don't really care. I just want to go to the store or, you know, drop my kids at school or, you know, whatever that you do in your daily life. And I don't really need something that's fast, flashy or anything like this. So merging on traffic, let's go. Here you got 30. You have 40, you know, so you have 50 miles an hour. This is not bad. I mean, of course, you don't hear any gear switches. It's the intelligent variable transmission, so it doesn't have any gear shifts. Now, I am in the sports mode. Let me see what it does when I try to switch the gears manually. It's got the simulated gears. Check this out. Well, there you go. It's still not a speed demon, but definitely uh, can move you a little bit faster when you control your own gears. Actually, I like the way that this vehicle handles. It's pretty cool. <laughs> you know, quite frankly, you know, for $20,000, here's your choices. I mean, you can either go with something like this. You can maybe get this uh, Mitsubishi Mirage, which, you know, honestly, I haven't driven one in a while, but they tried really hard to get me one on one of my business trips, and I completely refused it. I sat in it, and I got like, no, I'm not driving this. Um, or you can buy something used. Of course, if you're buying something used, uh, you have a used vehicle. You don't know how it's been maintained, taken care of. You know, maybe it's a few years old, not a warranty already. So uh, you got to keep that in mind. With this, you have this brand new vehicle. You're the first owner. Uh, you get the full warranty on it, and you definitely have plenty of space for a small vehicle like this. Other than the you know roominess in the uh, back seat for taller people, it's got 
a lot of spaces comparing to we used to have a fiat 126 if you don't know what that is uh, check it out it was a 650 cc we're a four-person family my dad was a fairly large guy and we were going all over europe and this little thing so if we could do it and that this would be like a rolls royce comparing to what we were used to so no complaints there guys thank you very much for watching i hope you learned one thing from this video if you did i've done my job if you like watching videos like this don't forget to subscribe to my channel and i'll see you in my next video cheers